All right, take a look at your uh, vocab quizzes. And quickly, the front page, there's not really much I can say about that. If you're losing points, it's just brute memorization and studying. That'll carry you through. If you weren't doing that, then you could have a problem. And I know that some of you walked into this quiz thinking that, well, this will be exactly the same as last year because the workbook's the same. And you can see that this quiz is not the same as last year. In fact, you only have two items on that quiz that probably look the same as last year's items. We are dealing with two units at a time. The roots are always fairly similar. So that first matching section can be a little bit difficult unless you've done the regular flashcard memorization sort of studying. So please make sure that you're doing that. Turn them over. Writing original sentences. Let me explain the five criteria. This is a sort of a five criteria test that I go through when I'm grading. And I make sure everything's done properly. Um, I'll do the easy ones first. It must be appropriately spelled. I'll pause and let that sink in. It must be appropriately spelled. It's there in bold. If you're misspelling it, you have a problem. So if you take a look at unacceptable, if it's circled here, and you see a 5, you misspelled it. And you need to pay attention a little bit more. Must be a complete sentence, not a run-on or fragment. Comma splices count as run-on. So if you see a circle around a comma and a CS, that is a comma splice. So make sure that it is a complete sentence, not a run-on or fragment. Um, correct part of speech. What part of speech is dejected? Sorry? It is a verb in the past tense, but it's part of speech is, Cassie? Adjective is correct. So it must be used as an adjective. Past tense verbs are often used as adjectives. So if I take the past participle break and say the broken stapler, I now have broken as an adjective. Dejected as an adjective, it's listed as such in your vocab workbook. It must use the word according to its correct definition. So I love the sentences that says, she was dejected from the class. No, that's the word ejected, not dejected. Just because it looks similar to a word doesn't mean that that's the word. Study the words. This last one is probably the most difficult for you. That means that you must show me that you understand what that word means. See, I put this rule up here because you guys are really clever. And I could see somebody s writing a sentence like this. And I could see an honor student going all lawyer legal on me, saying, Mr. Clarkson, use the word properly, complete sentence, spelled properly. I should earn credit. So <coughs> I decided to throw this one in there. You must demonstrate that you know exactly what this word means. Let me show you another example. All right, now, I read this and I think, wow, the author probably knows what dejected means because the author is saying it's a feeling of some sort. So that doesn't work too badly. However, here's the test for number three. Put yourself in the position of somebody who knows absolutely not what this word means. Does that sentence help you? No. This sentence does not help. That means you must include context clues that demonstrate that you know very clearly what the word means. This is an assessment. I am looking to see that you can use the word and that you know what the word means. Okay. See, you're laughing. My principal at work once again. Because it's a monkey. No, that should be satisfying. All right, anyway, you see the point. 
See, after her monkey died, it's context clues indicating that something tragic happened to this person. It helps me understand that dejected means sad, depressed, um, feeling of isolation, uh, depression. That helps me understand. If you just stop with she felt dejected, you would earn one out of two points. So you wouldn't earn um, zero credit. This would earn two out of two. So when you are looking at that sentence, first of all, you must know what the word means. You must use it properly in the sentence, spell it, complete sentence, and so on. But you must also show me through your sentence that you know what it means in such a way that if I knew nothing about this word, your sentence would help me. And that's how I grade all of them. That's how also how I will grade your semester tests when they come around, which will be mostly sentence writing. Um, that's how I will grade every one of these quizzes. So when you approach the quiz, next one coming up on Tuesday, first of all, study that list of words. It's not that long. You know, maybe a dozen words. Take a look at the sentences in the vocab workbook that use them. Practice writing your own sentences. If you are soft on this, if you earn zero out of four points on this portion of the quiz, then you might even want to go so far as writing a sentence for each and giving it to somebody and saying, here, this is what Clarkson's looking for. Do you think this works? If you didn't know what this word means, do you know what it means now? People are, your fellow students are bright enough to answer that question. Your parents are bright enough to answer that question. You should be fine if you were to do that work. It's a 10-point quiz, um, so it's, it's nothing super small. And uh, this is four points of those 10. So make sure that you're thinking about it. Questions? What if the llama died? Uh, that, then it would be sad. <laughs> then it would be just be pure sadness. That's right. I have no idea what happens when llamas die. <laughs>